Hello, welcome to tip number four. In the next amazing edition of Tips for V6. Okay, let's look at layer properties. Now, these are all of the things, the stuff that I mentioned in tip number three. Okay, we'll go through the basic ones first. So I've added an audio layer so that we have something to play with. Let's look at the general common properties. If you look at video and background, they share a bunch of properties, all this border width and corner radius and so on. I'll cover that in a moment. Um, so opacity is, is what you think it is. Uh, you can change the opacity of any layer. So if I wanted the background to be, to be lesser, I could do that. Let's quickly talk about audio layers. I've selected one here. Not very much to see, really. You have a volume and whether or not you want it output only. So you can monitor it. Uh, not really advised for a microphone because you will get loads of feedback. Uh, and you can see you know, the level meter that's being produced. So I like so. So I could mask the background if I choose a symbol. Choose my favorite circle here. And you get that. Let's undo that. Uh, mask, I could use an image. I have this um, crazy thing that I downloaded somewhere. I think I made it actually. It's just, it's it's any old basic image, and I think I've shown this in another video. Undo that. Okay, so that's fairly common. You can do that for video as well. So if I turn off the person mask and I add, uh, well, I can at least add the crazy back. Crazy mask. And yeah, it gets added to my video. Yeah, hey, um, okay, undo that. Put the AI thing back on because it looks better. Right, the other, the other property is um, AI person mask fast. You know, it's got fast, balanced and high quality. Basically it dictates how good the mask is around me. Let me make this fit to canvas so that you can see the mask better. Okay, if I hold still, you'll notice that it's shimmering around the edge. Yeah, it's because the mask is actually not that high quality, but it is fast. Now, I'm running on an Intel, so a little bit slower than the um, uh, the Apple Silicon machines. Uh, if I go balanced, yeah, much better mask. Oh no, it's a timer. Missile lock. Panic. Sorry about that. <laughs> Roasting coffee. Anyway, mask. So yeah, balanced gives you a much better look. You'll see that it's much more clearly defined on the edge. High quality is even better. It's really quite slow on the Intel, but it's not too bad on the M1. So you can see, whoa. But it's but it's a really nicely defined mask. I'm not sure you'd want to use it on a video though. Okay, let's switch back to fast. It's much better. And we can size me back and throw me uh, where was I? Bottom left. There we go. Okay, let's talk about moving layers. To reiterate, layers are arranged top down. Layers towards the top of the list, they sit on top of layers that are below them. Uh, that's visual as well. So video sits above the background. If I move the background layer to the top, it will cover everything else. So let's do that. First by drag and drop, I'd simply Click it, drag it, move it up, drop it there, and now that takes up, uh, you know, it's covering everything. We'll undo that so we can continue. Uh, this is available via a front to back as well. So I could move, say, the video layer to the front. I can right click, say, oh, um, yeah, just move the video up so you can see the menu. Right click and move to front. You'll notice that now goes to the frontmost position. If I click that and say move to back, it now becomes the last thing on the list. And if I choose the background and say move to back, there we go. That becomes at the bottom of the list. You can also move by just one position using the move forward and move backward commands. So right clicking, forward and backward, command up and command down. I'm going to use the shortcuts because it's a little bit faster. So let's move the background to the top again. Click the background and using command up, command up, now it's at the top. And we could either undo that using command Z twice or use the move backward 
And I'll, actually, I'll do with this just the second one from uh, the menu, just to prove it. Okay, and you'll notice that as we did that, the layer list was updating. You can see it moving in the list. Right, so to remove a layer, you select it, and I'm selecting the icon, not the actual name. Otherwise, you, you risk renaming it. Select it, then press the delete key. Okay, let's continue with layers. Now, we'll do an example. We'll create a green screen, a talking head, that you could import into something like Final Cut. And I used this for some of the other uh, V6 videos. So we'll create a new preset. And a preset, we'll call it talking head. And by default, we start with nothing. So we'll create and add an empty layer. And this is going to sit on the bottom. I'm going to resize this so that it's full size, fit to canvas. And we'll make it a single color, which currently is gray. Choose that, make it green, done. Okay, now we add the camera layer. We'll use the FaceTime camera. That's full screen, and we'll do the same thing we've done in the past. Uh, we'll size it to 40% and reset its position to the bottom left again. Right, last thing we need is the AI mask. Now we're done, that's it. Um, so it's really easy to use layers uh, to composite things that weren't possible in previous iShow products. And just to finish off the example, I thought I'd bring it into Final Cut to show you. So this is just a very short clip of me babbling away. And if I grab the green screen, green screen key it and drop it over the top, there you go. Uh, and so now I can composite stuff under that. So just an example of using layers.